Shyler. It's your girl Shyler Renee, and I am back with another banger. Oh, <laughs> I see you trying to get them commas, girl. You worth it. I know it's hard trying to do it on your own, but keep grinding and stay strong. It won't be long before you all the way up, looking back at the past, appreciating how you bust your ass to get the cash. I know it makes you mad when your kids ain't got a dad. What well, they got a dad? All right, y'all. And by the title, y'all can see what this video gonna be about. Uh, it's a story time, but I am I have a few tabs up on my um macbook that i want to just go through quickly um i want you to know that this topic will be sensitive it will be very detailed so that's just a pre-warning um and i just want to just bring awareness to it because the people that you think the most that won't get bullied they get bullied so um the first one is the bully awareness month is in october so every year if you know someone that is has gotten bullied or is getting bullied show appreciation or show them that they mean something in october i mean sure you could show them every single day but october is bully appreciation month or bully prevention month awareness month however you want to say it um another thing i wanted to say is there is a suicide help number because bullying can lead to suicidal thoughts we don't want anybody to harm themselves kill themselves or anything in that matter the number is and i'll have it on the screen also it's 800-273-8255 and that is a 24-hour helpline it's free you can talk to whoever you want to talk to anything you say is confidential um it's always better to talk to somebody than nobody. So, some people it's easier to talk to people that they don't know at all. So that is a that is a um, a good way to let out what you, what you're going through. If you can't talk to a parent or a relative or anybody in your family, that is a good way to let it out. So um, again, that number is eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. So. With that being said, I just want to let y'all know there is more than one type of bullying. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people are aware of that. But I just want to just bring up different type of bullying. And just so you can see, like, if you ever, not saying that you intentionally was a bully, but if you ever been that person that bullied somebody or hurt somebody and you didn't even know, you didn't notice, these are different types of bullying. The first type of bullying is obviously physically physical bullying, which is um, like hitting somebody, throwing something at people, all of that. Okay, there's also verbal bullying when you're just talking about people and you're just being nasty with your words and hurting people with your words. That's another type of bullying. Um relational aggression is like when you're in a relationship and you're being very very aggressive that's bullying that's considered bullying is considered a lot of different things can't think of the other words but yes those are words that i mean that is another type of bullying sexual i don't know if i said that one already sexual bullying is a bullying pre ju okay basically like when you prejudge somebody and you're judging them and you just mean to them for no reason that's bullying and you're you're doing it um unnoticeably but you're bullying and it could literally affect the person so much without you even knowing so just be careful about what you say and what you do and how you judge people um and the last one is cyberbullying and that's when you do it on the internet you can do it through text messages you could do it through Instagram, Facebook, email, Twitter, TikTok. Bullying is bullying. Um, anytime you're picking with someone or saying neg negative things about somebody, that's considered bullying. Whether they are sensitive to what you're saying or not, it's still bullying. It's a form of bullying. And I feel like if you are being a bully, you need to go find help. Because why tear down somebody else? You can talk to a counselor and a lot a lot of times a lot of times I'm not gonna say all the time, 
but a lot of times the bullies are going through things themselves guys so if someone is bullying you you never know what they're going through not making it any excuses for them but they probably need help themselves so they're trying to tear you down so if right now you're watching this video and you've been getting bullied or you've gotten bullied in your past i want to say stay strong there's a hotline number you can dm me on instagram you can talk to me about it your none of your information will ever get exposed i will never put your name i'll never talk about it with anybody you can come to me i can try to give you advice because i've got bullied plenty of times so anybody that is getting bullied or been bullied in the past you want to share a story you want to talk about it you can dm me on instagram my instagram is going to be down in the description in the description down below you can go over to my instagram and you can dm i will dm back i check my dms every single day i get dms just about random stuff so if i see your dm and it says something about bullying i would definitely click on it whether this is two years later or today i don't care i will click on it and i will help you out because i know how it feels to feel alone and when you're getting bullied even if you have family and they are helping you and they're very supportive i know how it is to feel alone so with that being said I'm going to get to my story. I have a few stories, but I'm only going to tell one today. If y'all want to hear more stories, um, DM me, comment down below, anything like that. So I'm glad that y'all stay tuned for that. Y'all stay for that part. So I'm going to get into my story. So it started when I was in ninth grade. Um, so let me start back a little bit. So I was in I lived in Texas from when I was in second grade to seventh grade. And um, I mean, I fit in. I was on a pep squad. I was just, you know, I just fit in. So I moved to Michigan, back to Michigan when I was in eighth grade. Um, my eighth grade school, they loved me. I loved them. No bullying. I was just cool with everybody. It's kind of like Texas. So then ninth grade, my dad and my mom got back together and they found the house that was um, in a different city. So I ended up switching schools and the type of school, the neighborhood I was in, it was like um, where the Chaldeans live. And no, none of the Chaldeans bullied me. That's the crazy part. It was never a Chaldean that bullied me. So it was where like the Chaldeans and the Arabics, I don't know what y'all want to be called or considered. So I'm going to just say both. It was where they lived. And I went to school with them. It was a very small school. So everybody knew everybody. Everybody seen everybody. The school was literally a square, a rectangle. And it was just no upstairs, no nothing. It was really small. I had about, I want to say like 800 kids. And that's from 9th to 12th grade. So it wasn't really that much people. So I started going there and at first um everything was okay. I mean, I didn't really like it, but I mean it was never to a point where I really hated school. So it was okay. I found a little friend a couple of little friends. They were really nice to me and they were like popular. But for some reason I got picked with y'all. So here it goes. So is this boy and I had a crush on him. He was African American and I thought he liked me too. Well, that's what he was portraying to me. But then when he got around his friends, he was on a basketball team. When he got around his friends, they would like talk about my size and my weight. And it, it was just always a joke. It was always something brought up about my size. It was different names brought up about my size. And, um, I'm gonna show y'all a picture. This is the size that I was in ninth grade. So obviously you don't have to be huge to get talked about because in my eyes, I wasn't huge. I wasn't fat, I wasn't nothing. Um, I was just, I mean, I was just a regular person who probably ate a little bit more than other people. And that was just that. But what happened was this one day, we were all at the table in the morning. We all like, everybody was in the cafeteria, we used to eat breakfast, or if we didn't eat breakfast, we used to be doing homework or whatever. So we was in the cafeteria. These boys was in the 10th and 11th and 12th grade. So we was in the cafeteria and then it was me and my older sister and then her, this girl she talked to 
and then my two friends and then the boys was around us so it was in the cafeteria keep in mind i'm thinking this boy like me and i'm thinking i like him and we just keeping on the low because i mean it's the beginning of the school year but no that's not how it went down so him and his friends talking they laughing they making jokes and then they're talking about i look like umaga and they thought that was really funny and I didn't find nothing funny about it, but you know how when you're in the moment, you just laugh it off or, yeah, you just, I just laughed it off. Like I didn't find nothing funny about it, but I always laughed at the joke because everybody around me seemed to think it was like funny. Um, Umaga is a semi-wrestler, sum, I don't know what it's called, sumo wrestler. I don't know, but I'm gonna show y'all him right here. Um, and then, Clearly, I don't look like him. I never did look like him. Um, I guess I have curly hair. He has curly hair. Um, I'm light skinned. He's light skinned. But about, but that's about it. I don't look like that man. And I let that get to me. And so then, um, the next day, they were throwing Scooby snacks at me. They were throwing, and I remember the snacks. I'm not just going to sit here and say they was throwing stuff at me. They was throwing Scooby snacks at me, like the little Scooby school snacks that you get for breakfast or lunch. Um, Yeah, they were throwing that, literally throwing it at me. So I didn't say nothing to my mom. I didn't say nothing to my dad or anything. But then this one day, my sister got sick. And this one all hell broke loose, y'all. My sister got sick and I kept telling my mom and my dad, no, I do not want to go to school. I don't want to go to school. So they were like, you can't just miss school because she's sick. Every time she's sick, you can't just miss school. But I didn't want to tell them like why. So then the next day it got even, I mean, that day it got even worse. They was talking about me for real, for real, laughing. They was throwing stuff at me. They was calling me Umaga down the hallway, yelling there, Umaga, hey Umaga. And I just remember that, like, that's somebody's name I will never forget because being caught that is very embarrassing for one. And it's like, dang, do I really look like that to y'all? Like, I was really hurt. I don't know if that was just a joke that they thought was just so funny, but I feel like it was just a bu bunch of goofy boys that had was going through something probably had low self-esteem they so because i walked into that school with the highest self-esteem and they probably like what in the world plus they never like it was never really any big people bigger people it was all like skinny and whatever but um yeah they was just like throwing stuff at me so then i ended up um crying and then my sister girlfriend she seen me crying so she called my sister and then I went to the counselor's office and I told them what was happening. Oh, this is what happened, y'all. Y'all won't believe it. They made a little, I didn't even know. How, oh, I didn't even know nothing about this. But they made a little Umaga sticker and put my face on his um on his body. And they had it floating around and they were sending it in a group chat or whatever on Instagram. And the my sister girlfriend was in a group chat. So what happened was when she seen me crying, she thought I, I that's like automatically what she thought. She thought I seen a picture floating around or somebody showed me the picture or something. But I never knew about it. So um I ended up going to the counselor's office. My mama and my dad ended up coming. My mama got off of work. My dad, he um I think he was off. But my dad came up there with my brother and and look at, almost said the name. But the girl she um she ended up showing the counselor and she ended up showing like i think this is why she cried i think she's seen this i never seen it but that hurt my feelings so much like not only was it just at school but after school hours y'all have the time to put my face on umaga's picture and make a group chat about it like I just felt like that was really unnecessary and really childish. Like, it was just too much. So then, um, I told my mom and my dad and the counselor, all of them, how they was throwing Scooby snacks at me, how they had been calling me Umaga down the hallway, how it was just, like, horrible. And I wanted to go back to my old school because I never got bullied there. Even uh, my 12th grade year, I ended up going back to that school and never got bullied. Never. 
never got talked about and if i did it wasn't like no bullying type of talking about it was probably like a girl talking about me or something like that not never no bullying so i was like basically really really hurt i was torn i didn't know what to do i was scared to go to school i was embarrassed because it's like they made that and that came out and i didn't even know about it so what else have they done and it's just embarrassing being called somebody that looked like that no offense to Umaga because now that's bullying but still like i'm a girl and i'm 14 and now y'all calling me umaga who is a grown man that's big and a wrestler like that's hurtful so then i go back to school so the um, counselor tell me I can leave. She tells my mama that the boys will get suspended or whatever. I go back to school the next day. The boys walk in the, ha walk in the hallway just laughing at me. Just doing stupid stuff. So I call my mama like, these boys are still here. I don't feel comfortable. Um, at least they could have got a couple of days off. But I don't feel comfortable. They was throwing stuff at me. And so, um... I'm going to call them and was like, I'm going to call the news. I'm going to tell the news that you guys are not doing anything about this bullying. And it's supposed to be a no bully zone at school. That's how all schools should be now. I think they all fall in the no bully zone. You cannot, it's no tolerance. It's no tolerance for bullying because that leads to things that people cannot come back from. So she was really mad. She called she caught up to the school so then they finally got suspended for real and it was just like i don't know it's just weird for the rest of the school year but all i knew is i didn't get bullied no more not that i know of i mean people can talk about you all they want but it's just like the bullying where it's a whole bunch of guys and then uh, Y'all, like, the girls wasn't even bullying me. That's the whole thing. It was no girls. It was all the guys. Like, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. This my first year in high school. My first month in high school. I want to say it was, like, we started school in September. It was, like, in November. So, I'm like, is this is how high school going to be? I don't want to go to high school. I don't want to be in high school. And I dang sure don't want to go to this school and that's that was my mindset for like the whole ninth grade then i finally switched schools but with that being said i just want to let you know that those times was hard sometimes i still think about that i have way more confidence than i did back then and i had confidence then so now that little stuff wouldn't hurt me it really would just be a laugh but at that very time, I felt down. Like, I feel like, dang. I really think I'm just, I really think I'm pretty. I think I'm beautiful. And then I got all these people over here making fun of me. I need to go back to the school where the people think I'm pretty. The people think I'm cute and I'm worth it. Like, they was making me feel like below, very below. Y'all crying every single day. Crying before I went to school. Um... I ended up getting this, let me tell y'all real quick. I ended up getting this boyfriend that went to my old school. And them boys were still trying to bully me. And this is all the way in like February. The boys were still trying to bully me. And the boy was a year younger than me that I was dating. He, We went to um, middle school together, but he was a year younger than me. And he wanted to come up to the school with his brothers and stuff. And I was ready. And I was just like, no, that's not even worth it. But what I can say is... That relationship gave me my confidence back because I'm like, this school, these boys is rude. These boys don't like me. Um, even though school is not all about boys, but you know, boys is can be real big jerks sometimes. So can girls. Popular girls can be real big jerks sometimes. And it can really hurt somebody's feelings and it can really put somebody down and make somebody feel like hurting their self. Seriously, guys, y'all need to stop bullying it don't matter what grade you're in. If you're in fifth grade, don't bully nobody. You're in 10th grade. What's the need to bully somebody? Build people up. This is a time where you need to start building people up. And you need to see that everybody has their own flaws. So worry about your flaws instead of trying to make somebody else um, sad about theirs. My baby crying. Hold up. But that being said... Y'all that's getting bullied, stay strong because at the end of the day, you're beautiful inside and out. 
you know what you're worth. Whatever you're worth or whatever you think you're worth, own it, baby. Own it. Because at the end of the day, when you own it, they're going to realize, oh, this baby think he or she is worth more than what I see. And that's what that's all that matters. All that matters is what you think you're worth. All that matters is what you know your worth. So know your worth and then add tax, baby. Know your worth and add tax. Don't let nobody bring you down. Don't let the comments bring you down. Pray. Know your worth. Prayer works, baby. And prayer kept me from harming myself. Prayer kept me from um, bullying other people because I was getting bullied. So it kept it kept me from keeping the cycle going because once you're getting bullied, you want to bully somebody that you think is not worth what you think what they think they worth. So you become the bully. So prayer helped me with that. Prayer helps me with knowing that I am loved. I'm loved. And if I feel like nobody on this walking this earth love me, I needed to know that I need to love myself and a man above with the most highest power love me. So that at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Whether you believe in God, you believe in Allah, the man above loves you. So that's all that matters. It shouldn't matter what the next person is thinking, what your friend is thinking, what who's talking about you behind your back. Know your worth. And it took me years to know that learn this guy. Guys, um, I want to say I didn't even learn my worth until after I graduated high school. I didn't know my worth. Now you can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me I'm fat and make me feel bad about it. Okay, baby, I'm fat, but I'm cute. And guess what? I can lose being fat, but if you're not cute, can you make yourself cute? No, I'm cute, and I can lose my weight. And at the end of the day, that is what it is. And if somebody want to call you bald-headed, guess what? I don't care. I can wear my hair how I want to wear it, and I can always add weave. If somebody want to say, you stank, or just stop bully say. Bullies just say stupid things, guys. And I know this video is long, and I'm going to rant because I am really strong about this. And if somebody could have clicked on this video today hurting and not knowing where to go and not knowing what to do next. I'm here to talk to you guys. That was my story time, but I'm also about to sit here and tell you guys what to do and vent a little bit. So for y'all that clicked on for about my story time and you don't feel like the ranting or you don't feel like listening, you can click off. I thank you for watching. I thank you for being interested. Thank you for sticking along this long. But for those that are hurting or been bullied in the past or being bullied right now, Stay on. I'm going to talk to you guys. I'm going to encourage you. I'm hoping that what I'm saying is going to stick to you and going to make you better. So at the end of the day, I want to say thank all my subscribers for subscribing. Thank everyone for sharing my videos. Thanks to everyone for liking my videos and being a supporter. Thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, join the Angel Mafia by subscribing. And we are a strong family that believes in the God. We believe in the highest power. And I pray for you guys every single day. So, yes, with that being said, I'm going to continue to talk. So, let me tell you this. I didn't wake up out the blue and was just like, oh, yeah, I'm cute. I'm this. I'm that. And I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what nobody comment under my, my YouTube. Or I don't care what nobody comment under my Instagram pictures. I don't care what nobody text me and say. I had to pray. Get on my knees and pray. I had to. I had to. Um, ask for my enemies to be removed. I had to ask for people who do not support me, people who envy me. I had to ask God to remove those people because at the end of the day, they will stop me from believing that I am who I am because people that don't believe in you is going to make you feel worthless. They're, they're going to make you feel worthless. So you won't know your worth. You won't know what you're worth until you remove those people that do not know what you're worth or knows what you're worth and makes you try to feel like you are not worth what they know that you're worth. They know your worth. They know that you're beautiful. They know that you have a beautiful personality. They know that if you do your hair and you wake up, you do your hair and you put some lip gloss on, you don't have to be full of face full of makeup they know that if you're a guy and you get your hair cut and you get lined up you don't gotta wear a designer you don't gotta wear chains to feel better you don't have to do that to look cute they know that so they're gonna make you feel below and you need to ask god to remove those people you need to ask god 
God, please remove my enemies. God, please remove the people that's taking me off my path. God, please remove the people that's making me not know my worth, God. So at the end of the day, God is going to be your best friend. You're going to have, some people have their parents to talk to. By all means, talk to your parents. Let them know what's going on. If you feel strong enough to talk to your parents about what's going on, how you feel, even if you feel suicidal, your parents is your best friends. That's your best friends that's walking this earth right now. If you have the parents that's like that, talk to them. My parents is my best friends. At the end of the day, I can go to my daddy and call my dad and tell my dad anything. And I'm going to get his honest opinion. And he's going to make sure that he is there for me at the end of the day, period. At the end of the day, I can go in the next room to my mom and talk to her about what's going on, how I feel. You got a charger in here? For, my, for your phone? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tackle something. Mm, it smell it. But at the end of the day, I can do that. So some people don't have parents that they can go to. I can go to both of my parents. I can feel comfortable enough to tell them how I feel, to tell them that, oh my, I feel low at this point. Oh my, I need a break. I'm having a mental breakdown. I have, I have those type of parents. Some people have those type of friends. I don't have those type of friends that I can go to and just vent to. Some people do. Some people have those type of siblings. Um, some stuff I can feel comfortable going to my sons about, some stuff I don't. Some people have aunties and uncles that they can go to. I have some aunties I can go to and this bent and not expect any type of judgment. And that's a lot of things that people are worried about. They're worried about being judged. They're worried about being talked about. They're worried about their family judging them. I don't have a mom or a dad that's like that that's going to judge me. I don't have... I have aunties that's like that, but obviously those are not the aunties I'm going to go to. I have, um, I don't have, well, I have siblings that's like that. So obviously that's not the siblings that I'm going to go to. But I also have siblings that's not going to sit there and judge me or talk about me to the next person. So therefore, I know which siblings I can go to. You have to know what people you can go to. You can, you don't need to do this on your own. You don't need to fight bullying. You don't need to fight any depression, anxiety. You don't need to fight any of that on your own. Find somebody you can talk to. If it's that um, hotline number, which I'm going to repeat again, if it's that hotline number, call, call that number and talk to them. The number is 800-273-8255. Let me let me tell you, if you need to talk to me, if you feel like I can speak some wisdom into you and I can help you and I, you want me to pray for you, I just started this praying out loud thing, so it might be a little sketchy, I mean like a little etchy or however you want to say it, but I will pray for you. And if you just need me to pray for you over the phone or you need me to pray for you just in my prayers, let me know what you need prayer for and I will pray for you because prayer works. I am telling you, prayer works. Everybody, y'all need to get on y'all knees. Y'all need to pray. If you're being bullied, don't worry about what anybody else has to say about you. Fix what you what you um, believe is wrong with you. And if you don't believe nothing wrong with you, don't fix it. Wear everything on, like, just wear it. Wear your face. Wear your weight. Wear it. You did it. You there. You like it. Wear it. If you don't like it, fix it. Don't fix it because the next person don't like it. Fix it because you don't like it because if you're fixing it because the next person don't like don't like it you will not be happy but if you're fixing it because that's what you truly want then you will be happy so with this being said i can't do another vent or rant or whatever about bullying anxiety depression bipolar i can do it about anything um y'all can just let me know dm me snapchat me i'll put my instagram and my snapchat in the description i usually don't put my snapchat in the description but i'll put both in the description and y'all can talk to me about anything guys i will not disclose anything with anybody it would be personal and it'll be between me and you and the lord um because at the end of the day that's what that's who is with us 24 7 the lord so no one in this world is with you 24-7 by your side 24-7. I don't care if it's a mama, auntie, your uncle, cousin, brother, sister, a friend. They're not with you 24-7, but God is with you. You can talk to him any time of the day and he's going to answer. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video really helped you and reached out to you and touched your heart. And I didn't 
two months ago, I probably couldn't have even did a video like this. I probably would have cried through it. But I have been with God, talking to him every single day, three or four or five times a day. I've been with him, walking the path that God has put me on. So therefore, now I can talk about stuff and have strength to talk about it. But I just want to say, one day you'll have the strength to talk about it. And you'll have the strength to tell somebody that they, they can do better and that they don't need to worry about no bully. So with that being said, um... Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be having more story time. Some more, um, um, sorry, my baby is crying and I just can't focus. But y'all, I'll be having more story times. I'll be having motivational speeches, I guess. That's kind of like what that was. Um, I'll have pranks, challenges, weight loss updates, um, all of that good stuff. But follow me on my social medias. One more time, I'm gonna say that. My Instagram is the real Shira Rennie, and my Snapchat is Queen Mia, no N, just like Queen, but no N, Queen Mia with no N. Um, I love talking to you guys. I love seeing you guys comment on my videos. I love responding back to you guys on the Instagram DMs. So just stay tuned for more videos. And like I always say, I will see you guys later. Bye. And we just getting started, my nigga. It's more coming for the haters to see. I know they love to see.